checking out this video. This is going to be another video on the VFC Umarex version 2 gas blowback MP5A5. Now I've had this for a little bit over a year now, actually about 16 months. So I've had a lot of time on it. I've, had, I've used it quite a bit in a lot of skirmishes, both outdoors and indoors. Indoor like tight room clearing CQB and indoor like arena where it's kind of like medium to short engagement distances and um, but over a bit more space and i've used it outdoors like a lot extensively like this and my xm177 tend to be like my go-to's for gas blowback outdoor guns they, they're they're perfectly adequate for it like straight out of the box so this is kind of uh, a year in review how it's gone some issues i've found and how i've like got around them and kind of just things to sort of make a note of if you're considering buying a gas blowback mp5 in general and specifically the bfc umarex one which in my opinion and an opinion i share with a lot of other users is that it is the best gas blowback mp5 on the market so before we go any further youtube this is an airsoft toy this and all of the other weapons that I'll be showing in this video, like all my other videos, are all airsoft toys. They do not fire ammunition. You cannot put bullets in there. They fire six millimeter BBs. Pew. They cannot be altered or made to cause anyone serious harm. This is a safe environment. No one else is home. Um, and I'm the only one in the house. Um, I'm not gonna be loading it with any ammunition. There is gas in the magazine, so I can show how it functions a little bit, but that's it. So they're safe, it's a safe environment. That being said, let's get right into it. And we're gonna start with the negatives. If you wanna jump to the positives and ignore all the negatives, that's fucking stupid. Listen to people's honest reviews, because this is like, I've got no reason to like big this up and leave out all the negatives. Like there are some negatives, like every Airsoft platform, you will have some negatives to consider before purchasing things. So uh, I am gonna go over how to get round all the negatives so that you can kind of overlook them a little bit um, because it is worth the trade off in my opinion. Just do make sure you make note of these shortcomings that you will find maybe you're spending 500 quid minimum really, if you can find that either for these on a, on a VFC MP5. That's expensive. The magazines, if you can find them, are like 60 quid a pop. That's expensive. You need, in my experience, like a good game sort of combat loadout is five. I can make do with five. Um, they're super easy to reload. Uh, we'll get into that in the positives later. Um, so five is plenty and you can reload them as you go back to respawn and stuff like that quite quickly. No problem there. But what we need to make a note of is just how expensive buying into this kind of platform is. Now, it's probably not more expensive than any other gas blowback MP5. And you're not really gonna need to do anything to it to get it skirmishing, skirmishable. Uh, you just need to get gas and BBs and mags, maybe an optic. Iron sights are perfectly fine. First time I used it out, outdoors, I just used iron sights and I was clacking people from way, way further than I'd expect an airsoft MP5 to be able to clack people from. Definition of clack, as in clack, 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 clack. Shortcoming one, it's expensive, but it's no more expensive than the WE, really. Um, if you want the realistic looking magazines for the WE, you're looking at like 70 to 80 quid a pop, um, and that's if you can find them, um, because the WE mags are ridiculously bent. They curve way more than they should and have an open front so you can see all the BBs like other gas SMGs and pistols and stuff. So that kind of sucks. But you you can also get a drum mag for the WE one, which is kind of kind of cool. So there are there are pros and cons to each. Um, for realism and for gas efficiency and everything like this is the best one to go to. It is expensive, but the point is you'll probably spend less on it, maintaining it and keeping it going um, just because of how good it actually is. Number two, this is gonna be specific to mine, okay? Uh, it's something I have talked about before, and that is that the trigger group that came with mine, so the, the one that comes with the gun, is, see it's on safe right now? So there's nothing in here, nothing in the gun. You'll be able to do like one dry fire and then it'll, the, the awful bolt stop function will, will do its thing. But um, see it's on safe, right? 
Yeah, that's a problem. No idea why it started doing that. Uh, I don't use this lower with it really. I prefer the A3 lower and that's what I have uh, that I normally run it with. And that's what I've used the most. So I've not really used this lower. As soon as I got the gun, I, all, I had the, uh, the A3 trigger group. But I already, I'd already purchased this um, and as soon as it arrived, I put this on it. Um, just because I kind of prefer how it looks and the ergonomics of it and like it's more of a classic predator slash diehard vibe sef classic you know that's on safe that works fine i don't really know how that got the original one got damaged because i wasn't using it so that's kind of unfortunate it's not it's not the end of the world it still works it still does single three round burst full auto and that's fine uh i just need to make sure that my trigger discipline's down and I'm not and I'm not gonna have a negligent discharge because I'm fucking around with it when it's unsafe and the safety doesn't work. So that's that's a big annoying problem that it had. Uh, and I don't know why. I didn't drop it or do anything to damage it or anything. I don't understand why the safety doesn't work. Now this appears to just be a problem with mine. Nowhere else I've read has had this problem. Nowhere, like there, there have been problems with it sometimes chucking four out on three round burst and you know, I get that it's a mechanical thing. If we, that could be gas dependent, you know. <laughs> yeah, but there are there are several reasons why I might do that. I've not heard of anyone else is having this issue, so I'm feeling like mine was just a lemon, kind of, which sucks. But uh, it is what it is. Other than that, it still works. It still clicks really nicely and positively into all the positions. Like it's 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 cool. Uh, these are really complicated. Like I can do bits and bobs of tech and stuff to troubleshoot small problems and, and get things working. But like this is like, I need a, an actual HK technician to, to look at this and, and, and fix it. So I am actually on the lookout for another one of these. A mate of mine has um, a need for some, you know, just want some spare parts and stuff to keep, uh, to keep his ticking over. And he's got enough bits of furniture and, and another lower and, and whatnot to almost build a complete new rifle if we were to go halves on one. And I take the original collapsible stock and the three round burst control group and he takes the rest of the gun. So thinking about keeping an eye out for second hand ones. So that's, uh, that was issue two and that was a pretty big issue. That's a make or break for some people. Um, I, I'd already had the gun for like six months before I even noticed that this was a problem because I was using the A3 SEF lower. So uh, it's kind of too late to return it. Besides that, I bought this from Action Airsoft, like the pro -Ax store in Taiwan um, and imported it myself. There was no chance I was gonna send it back. <laughs> um, I did get in touch with VFC directly at their, their Pentagon help center um, and they weren't really much use. Um, I did ask, you know, what what is the problem with it can can i buy some parts to fix it or whatnot and uh they didn't really get back to me um wasn't wasn't too helpful uh so that was disappointing hey ho they're a big company they've got bigger things to worry about i imagine like designing more sick gas blowback guns so i'll let them do that and i'll figure out what the fuck is going on with mine issue number three the collapsible stock is a piece of shit the thing, I'm not gonna take the full stock off and because it's a bit of a pain in the ass, I'll get into that. I'm not gonna put this back on to show you. Um, go watch my other videos on it. <laughs> uh, I do make a bit of a point of it in my other MP5 videos. Let's take a look at it. So you can see there's a big gap, right? Now, when it's on the gun and it's extended, it wobbles quite a bit, an unacceptable amount. It shouldn't wobble that much. It's a five, 600 quid gun. You shouldn't be getting a stock that wobbles like, oh, dare I say it, a real one. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like I'm sure if you go into like a police armory or something and you pick up an MP5 that's been on their racks for like, you know, 20, 30 years, that's gonna have some wobble on it. That's the amount of wobble that this has out the box and it was just unacceptable. Now to mitigate that, you can clamp the, the little latch here, you clamp it the other way, right? But what that does is that puts tension on the bits inside and the mechanisms inside that starts to separate and give you a big crack running through the back of it. Now, is it more than just a, a visual issue? Probably not, but the gap did progressively get worse and worse and worse and worse. 
that was just that's just it's just bullshit like it's a expensive piece this like i spent spent a lot of money on this and i shouldn't have those problems inside inside this bit there's a plate um that this back triangular sort of bit sort of clips round and that plate screws into this section with these two screws then if you can see them they're they're on there you go there's one there that's all scratched and pissed up and there's one on the other side so that holds the two pieces together and then if you can see down the bottom there's two more screws that are the other way now when you've got the plate off you screw those in from the back right and then you clip it all back together and put those screws in and stuff right simple take it apart tighten up all the screws and then it'll be fine right no no vfc use fucking too much uh thread lock on on stuff and i don't know if this was made on like the friday night the friday afternoon and the, the bloke had run out of um run out of the right thread lock so just grabbed some super glue and was like yeah that'll do and then went off down the pub i don't know but like that was at, which just wasn't coming out the one that's like obviously hacked away at wasn't coming out at all it took a lot of like stuff dremeling out the original screw head and then um making like a slit in it so i could get in with a screwdriver but then that didn't work either so i was like clamping it with a pair of pliers and eventually it, and i'm not joking it took like weeks <laughs> of getting like i do it for a few hours get frustrated that it wouldn't work and then I, I don't, yeah but it took fucking ages to get this thing apart properly and when i did i realized that these two little screws down the bottom that you can't really see boom boom all right they um they're not long enough <laughs> they're not long enough they don't they don't come through into this section if they came through into this section i could then like clamp them down with some um like some bolts and you know that would hopefully sort it out but i just kind of gave up on it at that point i'm now i'm like all right i can do that next time i can be bothered to take it apart and shit i will do that and and hopefully have a more permanent fix for it uh, but for now i've kind of just taken it off realistically i'm only really gonna use this i it is really handy for like indoor cqb stuff um but with the sef grip i actually find that when it's closed up it kind of gets in the way of your wrist and it makes it quite uncomfortable so no matter what you have to have it out if you're using it with the sef grip with the original one that comes with it uh, which i don't use indoors because it's got three round burst uh, preference but with the original one that came with it it's it's more manageable but with the sef because of the grip angle um it's actually quite uncomfortable on your wrist to be using it with it closed so you do have to have it open anyway so at that point, it's like, I may as well just have the full stock and not worry about this. Um, I'll, so I only really use this when I just need to take a gun quickly in a backpack and, um, you know, travel across across town with it to go play a game with CQB. Otherwise, I'll just keep the full stock on it and I will put this on when I want to watch Die Hard. Easy. So, I mean, there are a couple of other little gripes that I could have with this, but nothing nothing detrimental nothing serious it's fantastic outdoors i run it with three twos and a fair a fair amount of hop and it shoots them straight out for friggin ages i haven't i haven't measured it but i'm like i'm like hitting people out at 60 meters easily even with two eights and a bit less hop um which i have done before as well i, I mean i prefer using three twos especially outdoors when it's you know windy and you're playing in the woods and there's lots of shrubbery and stuff it's, you, you're able to just punch through stuff a little bit more better the charger handle i've slapped the ever-loving piss out of mine and it's not broken yeah i know on the earlier batches of these uh they are known to have problems with you know the, the cocking tube breaking and stuff but mine's been absolutely fine um, and so is my my mates his has been fine as well apart from the lack of like a dead man's click function uh where the bolt goes home and you drop the hammer and it just goes click instead of bang um everything's pretty cool what i mean by that if you don't know when this thing's empty the bolt just kind of slams into the magazine follower and doesn't fully close 
which is a, with a bit of a shortcut on, on BFC's part, I think. Uh, the mags don't have any kind of dry fire mechanism. You'd have to remove the BB follower to have it dry fire at all. So, I mean, that does save me gas, <laughs> really, because if, if it did, I'd, like my other guns, I'd just be fucking dry firing it in the house all day, laughing around, doing room clearing with no one. But yeah, other than that, it's absolutely spectacular, indoors and outdoors. If you want to use it indoors, some places might have a bit of a lower FPS limit. Um, and if that's the case, you will need to get a different rocket valve. Now the rocket valve just is this floaty bit that sits on a spring inside your nozzle. It kind of dictates how much air goes that way and how much air goes that way, in, to, to put it in simple terms. You can get one that has a lower output that way. So you do actually get a little bit more of a kick, but the power coming out the muzzle end is a bit lower. On a 0.2 gram BB, it's doing between 315 and 320 FPS, which is still perfectly fine for outdoors as well, especially if you're using heavier ammo. If you do want to get a bit more power out of it, you can just put some like higher pressure gas in there, some red gas. Um, I've not tried it on black gas, I don't really want to. Um, I would like to try the CO2 magazines. So, if you have CO2 magazines, they're fucking hard to find at the moment, especially in the UK. If you're in the UK and you have some CO2 magazines for it, an MP5 you don't want, get at me in my Instagram below, um, because I will have those. It's getting a bit too warm to do a winter test with them now, um, but you know, I, I'll, I'll save that for, for winter. I wanna see if this could be a winter gun um, with the CO2 mag. So yeah, if you've got some of those, or if you're the person on SR Forums UK that I was trying to buy them off, for a while, um, who stopped taking me seriously because I took ages to respond. I'm sorry. Uh, get in touch and, and we'll, we'll sort it out. So this is kind of the outdoor configuration of it at the moment. Um, full stock is so good. It's honestly, if you're gonna buy this, get it with the collapsible stock. Take it apart straight away. Take apart the stock straight away and tighten up all the bolts. And then hopefully you'll have less problems than I did. Um, but also get a full stock. Now this isn't the VFC one. No, you can tell because these little, the pinholes aren't pinholes, they're fake. <clears throat> this is not the VFC one, this is a SEMA one. It took a bit of like removing some material from the inside to get it to go on. I then had to use like a makeshift plug thing <laughs> for the end of the receiver. So the recoil spring assembly had something to go into that was stable inside the stock because obviously an AEG stock has a hole in the back of it so you can put your battery in the back. On the gas blowback stocks, they come with a plate that just covers up your entire end of the receiver. I obviously don't have that because it's not a gas blowback stock. So I put this little plastic kind of thing in there that was the right diameter and that does the job. I think it's even like short stroked it a little bit, which I'm not mad about. Makes it a bit more clackier. Clack, 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 clack. So yeah, this is this is this is cool. Um, I've just got the original grip on here. My full stock, my three round burst lower because three round burst is fucking dope outside. If you want to make sure you've hit someone, three round burst them. If someone's not calling their hits, three round burst them in the neck. And you can make that shot with this easily because it's so fucking accurate. I have noticed, I don't know if it's my iron sights have come a bit dislodged or what. I have noticed that some, some of my shots will veer to the right. And I think it's actually because my bolt comes in at an angle and picks up, can you see it's kind of twisted? It kind of comes in a little bit twisted. Um, so if I'm doing like rapid shots, it won't have time to seat the round straight in the chamber before I fire it off. If I'm doing bang, 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 clack, 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 it won't have time to sort of sit and make sure everything's where it should be before it punches the BB out the barrel. And I think maybe that's veering them off slightly to the right. You're talking like from here to the end of my garden, which is probably about 20 meters, probably not even that, probably like 15. You're looking at maybe like a, a centimeter, if that, of, of like veer, uh, which can usually be corrected by wind. Um, so, you know, we're not talking real gun ballistics here. We're talking little plastic balls flying through the wind. It's not gonna be like pinpoint accurate. Um, so you do have to kind of take take the <laughs> wind's 
where you can. It doesn't it doesn't affect my ability to like use it. Um, and most of the time I'm using the red dot anyway, so if I've got it zeroed for 50 meters or something, you know, my red dot's gonna be where the BBs are going. I'm not really gonna be using the iron sights. There is a part, I think by Hyphestus, if that's how you pronounce it, or maybe it is Bowmaster as well. The uh, rocket valve is Bowmaster. I think that they do a part like that just replaces your the, the feed ramp inside that um, might correct that, and it's not very expensive, it's like twelve quid. So yeah, if that problem like persists or appears to get worse, uh, I'll look into replacing that part. Until then, I kind of just like to keep it as stock as possible and just replace things as and when I need to. Like that that issue is not the end of the world, and the part is really cheap. Like the Bowmaster. Uh, rocket valve that I put in here to bring that power down a bit. It was only like 12 quid from CRWS, which used to be based in Hong Kong, now based in South London. So chipping was like a couple of quid. It was a fucking pain in the ass to fit, mind you, because the bolt is an absolute dickwad. Like the, the way it, the way it goes in and attaches. I mean, it's obviously it works really well. The design functionally is really good, but if you want to change anything inside it, it's a fucking pain in the butt to to actually do. I think Bad Bing's got a video on it and uh, Explosive Enterprises has a little breakdown of it. It is frustrating. It takes a lot of uh, figuring out and practice and make sure if you are going to do something like that with your nozzle, you uh, watch those videos enough to know how everything goes back together correctly. I, I knackered a couple of return springs doing it like because I wasn't doing it properly. I was doing my usual, whoa, fucking, I know what I'm doing. No, I don't. Yeah, watch, watch, watch some videos on that before you attempt it. Uh, save yourself some springs. Those, those little upgrade parts aren't very expensive. The little feed ramp upgrade isn't very expensive. The barrel in this is pretty, pretty, pretty damn good. Like the hop uh, chamber design is really good. Um, it's super, super effective. Um, it clicks very like, so all those little clicks there, they're, 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 it's super intuitive. Um, and you, because you can take the hand guard off, you can literally, Shoot, 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 adjust, shoot, adjust, and uh, it's really, it's really easy to change. You know, BB weights that you're using indoors. I'm not going to use three twos with it. I'm going to use two fives with it. So I'm going to want to dial that hop right down. But it, it can still, it's still, it's still perfectly, perfectly useful. I don't know what the <laughs> mixture of things in there that they've done is, but it can go from shooting twos perfectly straight to shooting two fives perfectly straight, and you can just, and it, it, it does everything. It does everything quite well. Um, I'm sure if you have just one purpose for this and it's outdoors and you want to fine tune it so that you've got an upgraded hot rubber that can lift fucking four eights, <laughs> you can you can do that and, and have this as you go to. But because I use it for different things, I like to keep, keep that stock because the stock one seems to be able to do the different things quite well. I'm, I'm sure there are things out there, upgrades I can do to make it do one thing really, really well with the amount that I like to use this. Um, I, I, it's just not really necessary for me right now. Well, I've got the handguard off. Let's go over some different handguards that you can get for these, because you can get pretty much anything. So we got like a Midwest Industries sort of M-lock thing, which is kind of cool. I actually got it for free uh, because it's missing the proper, it's missing the proper uh, like pin mechanism thing. Um, I've done my best and screwed in a couple of uh, like that. I think they were from like a uh, scope rings. A couple of those either side and then I can get a screw through and that holds it in quite nicely. It's not quite straight. Um, so it needs a bit more work, but um, I, don't, I don't really use it. Like, it's cool, it looks cool. Why wouldn't it? Like, little Midwest Industries M-Lock handguard. Of course it looks cool. Actually, that does look really cool. I might, I might run it like this a little bit. <laughs> that's, that's, that is awesome. M-Lock stuck to it, an M-Lock grip. Um, flashlight, whatnot. Uh, but really, if you're gonna put a flashlight on an MP5, there's only one way to do it. And that is with the Surefire or Surefire style grip. Now, this one isn't a Surefire style grip, clearly. Um, it's got like all these little tactical vent holes and stuff in there for some reason. It's, uh, I think it's an ICS grip and it has a really, really good torch in there. Um, it's got a really nice hot point. It's just really nice, it's really good. I don't know how to explain it, I'm not a torch guy. Again, I think I, think I found it used for like 20 quid, uh, which is a lot less than the VFC 
one or an actual surefire one um, and it does the job. I actually quite like the little vent holes that are in it and even though they're not M-lock I can actually get an M-lock grip on there but it, it looks a bit pan. So yeah stuff like that like the stock the VFZ one's like 70 80 quid like and yeah it comes with the end plate it's legit it, it is really nice it's got the pin holes but this was 17 <laughs> and it's fucking solid like it's not going anywhere. It was a bitch to get on and fit, but with a, with a Dremel and an afternoon, and I was able to, to get it on there, and it's not going anywhere. It's actually a really massive pain in the ass to take off, so I don't really want to. If you, I'll, I'll put up some older clips of, of the gun with the other sort of furniture configurations and stuff to show off the other stock. But man, like this is a fucking vibe. Like for indoors, fucking strobing people indoors, this is unstoppable, honestly. Like this is my favourite gun, despite all the shortcomings that it has, despite the issue with the trigger box and the stock and every now and then my BB is flying right, like this is my favourite airsoft gun I've ever used. I've used a lot of airsoft guns like in the last 20 years that I've been playing the game. This, this thing is absolutely phenomenal. It wants to be fired constantly. It just wants to be shot. It wants to be used. It wants to be, you, you need you need to play with one. And I mean, you need to like go and, if you've got a mate that's got a gas, a VFC gas MP5, like ask to borrow it for a game, right? Maybe give them your phone as or your watch as a security deposit in case you fuck anything up. But I doubt you will because you can't. Like I could, I could run this over probably and it wouldn't, break maybe the plastic would break I don't know that's probably an exaggeration don't take me on that don't run over your VFC MP5 and expect it to work but it's a beast like I can bang in nails with it um, I can use it as a hammer to fix my other guns with and it's absolutely fine like so yeah if you've got a mate <laughs> that's got one borrow it and you and you'll know what I mean I'd lend this to any of my mates that want to have a go uh, using using it or using a gas gun in general really it's a very very easy to use gas gun I, I can't recommend this enough to be honest despite all its shortcomings I cannot recommend it enough it's it's really good for indoors it's like all weather it's fine like um, my mags might not be quite as efficient but it's still manageable um, in the interest of like saving gas and stuff I probably would use an AEG in the colder months I don't need to. I can if I can put up with the extra little bit of ag and filling up my mags a bit more frequently with gas. Like if I can be bothered to do that. You can run this all year round if you're playing indoors. If you're playing outdoors in the winter, absolutely not. I've got a video on uh, like a winter shooting test that I'll link up here. It's it's not you can't you, it just doesn't work. The mags are made of steel and they're super thin. So they just freeze like like so quickly like the, the all of it it just freezes up and it's and it's fucking useless you, you're sort of double tapping on um single shot from where it's like light striking and coming back and it picking up a bb enough to come back and releasing enough gas to send it out don't go very far um and then the mags get too cold the gas turns to liquid gas and it just pisses out the ejection port and you'll need to clean everything so that's, uh, that is a thing, like you ain't using this outdoors in the winter. That's why I want to get hold of some CO2 mags um, because I want to see if that does make it uh, feasible for the winter. For this, this time of year when it starts getting warmer um, and you're playing outdoors and indoors. Uh, so I, I last played indoors with it. The time of filming right now is like, uh, what, mid-April, right? So um, it's starting to get warmer. I last used this at the end of March indoors and uh I, I go through a lot of bbs i go i go through like all five mags in i shoot a lot and i it's just indoor it's like cqb like i'm i'm shooting a lot there's a lot of opportunity to shoot um and once you find a good spot and you can just like ping people like is you're good i go through all five mags in about 10 minutes which is a shooting a lot right and i can honestly if you don't believe me you don't need to fucking believe me but i can honestly say I never ran out of gas in my mags. So I'd do them every 10 minutes and then I'd, uh, when I'd get shot or if I had no bullets left and my sidearm was out, I'd just walk back to, you know, respawn area and fill up my mags, um, which is something I wanted to touch on. I, I'd fill up my mags and come back again and, and just kind of keep doing that. Um, and I never ran out of gas. That's not to say that I never needed to fill the mags up with gas. I never ran out of gas. My mags never ran dry. Um, 
in between games, so every half an hour to 45 minutes, I'd give them a little top up. Uh, but not like a full psh, like 12 seconds, which is generally what I tend to give gas mags. Um, just just a couple of seconds. Oh, yeah, no, all good, all good. Um, and then I get going again. Obviously, indoors, running around a lot, I'm sort of quite warm. Um, it's getting warmer indoors and, you know, every, everything's working in its like almost ideal condition to to run smoothly and, and to fight the effects of cool down and, and what that has and does to a gas airsoft gun. Uh, the mags, thankfully, are super easy. They're super duper easy to reload and fortunately I have a loaded speed loader just down at my feet. So I'll show you. Like you don't you don't need an adapter, you just need your speed loader. So there's no extra bits and bobs to fucking worry about. Um, and there's your feed lips. So all I'm gonna do is pinch either side, so behind with my finger and in front with my thumb. Like that. And then I just go straight in. Like it's it's so easy. I can use my chin. They, they take about seven pumps. But with five mags, I kind of wish I had a two more um, and then I wouldn't need to reload as much. But with five mags and with how easy it is to reload them, you know, once you're shot, you can just quickly reload it. Or like if you have like literally like five seconds to spare and you've got speed loaders, I tend to keep my speed loaders in my front pocket on my, on my rig. Um, I don't touch them until I've got at least three mags to reload because otherwise they rattle a lot and if they hold 90 rounds and these hold 30, do the math. But, uh, but you can do it like, you can do it if you're under fire and you're out of ammo and you've just got a quick fucking grab, reload a mag. All right, pop it back in, bang, 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 clack, 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 clack. You can, you can do it like that. It's because they're super easy to reload. Now, talking about reloads. So this is, this is like a Helicon training rig. Um, it holds AR mags like that. It holds MP5 mags like this. I would kind of like to get, like the, the mag pouches inside here are like the Velcro ones that you can remove and then put in a new, a different one. I would kind of like to get an SMG one, but they don't really move. I'm not really jumping up and down much. And when I am, I can sort of make a note of, mm, don't drop your mags. These are pretty robust. I have dropped them a lot. I don't deliberately drop them out the gun and I'm reloading or anything like that. I kind of try and manage and re-index or at least drop in my dump pouch so that I'm not dropping on the floor, but uh, they can survive blows to the floor on concrete or whatever because they're just made of steel. They're basically a steel shell around a big, big gas tank that holds a lot of gas for the, for the size of it. So yeah, talking of reloads, generally I try to give it one of these. So I lock back, grab a new mag, hold one out, new one in. And if I've got time, I'll re-index, but I'll kind of go, I know to go in between the mags is uh, generally smoother, although not when I'm trying to demonstrate it. And then slap home and I'm good to go, right? Now, sort of show you that a bit, bit more speed. Without getting caught in my strap too much. So, <laughs> When I'm, when I'm actually playing a game, I'm doing it a bit faster, so it is a bit, it is a bit more better, but if we go, let's try and do it, try and do it quick. Uh, I do have a couple of other, other pouches that if it is difficult to re-index, I'll just go straight into a different pouch and then manage it later, but let's go, so. And I'm back on. All right, one more time. See, my habit is to go for the mag first, and I'll explain why in a moment. Um, on my older rig, I would have enough pouches free to just have one to go into. On this one, I don't. Um, so my, my habit that I'm trying to get out of at the moment is mag out, mag in, reload. But obviously with my other older rig, I wouldn't have a, the empty mag in my hand the entire time. Um, so yeah. But you know, like anything, it just takes a bit of training, a bit of practice. Um, getting those techniques down. If I'm really rushing, that might be where I drop a mag. So I'd go make a note of where that mag is and keep playing. You don't want to lose these, they are expensive. As I said, they're like 60 quid a pop. So ideally you want them on your person the whole time or you're just going to start 
pissing away money, essentially. As I said, this current setup, perfect for outdoors with five magazines. Indoors, I wish I had a bit, bit more. Um, I really want someone to hurry up and make a drum mag for this, or at least the adapter for the Armourer Works drum mag. I know that kind of puts it in direct competition with WE and WE and Armourer Works at the same company. There needs to be like a drum mag adapter for this. Um, for, for indoors, that would be fucking absolutely unstoppable, like a 300 round fucking drum mag, especially if you're only doing semi-auto, it's gonna last the, the whole game. I mean, that's twice the ammo I have in all the mags on my rig anyway. So, you know, if you can have a drum mag and then five mags, you're laughing. <laughs> <coughs> but that is a possibility. There are companies making the adapter things for all the, the different gas drum mags you can get and because there's a, big, there's a big market for like doing that, going that route for HPA users and stuff. Personally, I'm not really into that. I'm like, I don't like having the tube. <laughs> Uh, and a tank, I'm not a ghostbuster or a diver, unless unless I was doing a diver rig, like a Navy SEALs rig with a diving tank on it or something. Uh, HPA just doesn't really appeal to me enough to sacrifice w the weight and the maneuverability of, of having the tank on you and the line going into your gun. Um, there was obviously like plenty of ways to have it not snag on things. You obviously have a sling anyway, so I get that the hose isn't that big of a deal if you've got a sling, because uh, you just sort of weave it into your sling. But um, still, it's just uh, just not my cup of tea, really. Let me just go over the last couple of bits of furniture I've got that I some, sometimes swap out. I've got the little old school hand guard. All right, the little sort of uh, embassy siege vibe. Um, that obviously goes much more better with the SES lower. And then the little mag pulley vibe. Now again, this isn't real mag pull. This was bought from six millimeter um, in Hong Kong. Uh, it's some cheap copy, I think, I think they're called GG, not to be confused with GNG. So many different companies with the same fucking name. It's ridiculous. But it does have a Magpul logo on it, which is a bit cheeky. So that goes in, in there just fine. Um, I did have to Dremel a, a little bump out that kind of keeps it in line uh, when it's on an AEG. And it doesn't sit quite flush yet, um, so it's still got a bit more work to do to that, but I think on this setup, that would be a cool outdoor setup if I didn't need to run a torch. If I did, I could unlock one on. But as again, again, as I said, if I need to run a torch, I'm gonna use a torch handgun. Why wouldn't I? Obviously your MP5 is like your first kind of step into modular platforms, or at least the, you know, the first popularized one that was successful. Um, in that you can just swap out your stock, you swap out your, your fire control group, your grip, and you know, do all sorts of stuff and things to it. You can also, Pop these on the HK53 if you've got the HK53, which I do want a 5.56 MP5, a chonky MP5. That is a fucking vibe. Super modern MP5 builds are kind of cool. There's the UTG uh, rail that is like a full length top rail um, that clips into a handguard and they sort of like attach together and lock in together. So you've got like sort of a, an AR a level of uh, accessory options and stuff like that. If I was doing like gameplay videos a lot and stuff and needed places to mount cameras, that might be something that I'd have to look into. Uh, but I'm not really, I don't. When I'm playing a game, I'm too focused on playing the game. I don't, I don't want to be making content and playing games. I might do a bit of filming every now and then to sort of throw into videos like this that are more sort of informative about sort of different guns and, and whatnot. But I've not really thought about diving into that area of uh, airsoft the YouTube stuff yet. All, all I really need to run it with is, if I'm indoors, the flashlight and my optic, just out of, out of preference. This is a Vector Maverick, um, which is which is cool. It's nice and sort of crystal clear. The Zero doesn't wander <laughs> like some cheaper red dots do with the recoil. I have, I've had little micro dot sights that like to switch off uh, because the battery gets jolted every time it fires. So not good but yeah uh, it's, it's it's great i think i got it in a christmas sale as well for about 30 quid um and it's good quality it's real real good quality it's like vector optics if you don't know they make real steel optics and um, they're based out in, in china and they they do actually do military stuff with the chinese military they're, they are they are good quality um you don't get the same kind of warranty you might do with uh, vortex um so 
that is always something worth considering when you're looking to buy an optic. Definitely worth checking out. The mount that it comes with as well is really cool. I can drop down to my irons nice and easily if I need to. The only other part is another stock. And this is cool. I got this really cheap, I think I think it was a fiver on SR forums. It's got a little HK marking, which is, uh, which is kind of cool. Very cheap plasticky feeling thing. Again, um, I'm not sure what brand it was. Um, I had to Dremel out material to get it to fit onto the MP5, onto the VFC. I took away too much. I kind of like fucked it really. It's really badly done. Um, it looks fine when it's on the gun because you can't tell how, un how uneven it is when the gun is in the middle. <laughs> it's, it, it could have been done a bit more better. I think what I, what I need to do is get like the end cap that you can get with a little sling swivel on it. I'll get one of those, put that on and then um, attach the metal sort of bracket to that and just bolt it in. It just, the bolts go through the plastic and thread into the actual uh, metal bit at the back and then I'll have a, a little foldy boy. It does work, uh, it, it sits on there, it just wobbles around a little bit and that, if you can't tell, I get really pissed off by wobbly stocks. So that's uh, something that I will look into fixing, but it is a really cool stock. I like the little side foldy thing. It does give you a bit of extra, extra girth, you know, if you're adding that to the side of it, whatever, it does the job. So, that's all I really have on it so far. If I obviously have any more issues arise, I will make like a little updated video. So do keep an eye out on the stuff I'm posting. If you're interested in it, give me a little like and a subscribe. Um, it does it does help. It is nice to see my videos slowly go up in views and stuff. It, that's what kind of gives me the motivation to keep doing it. It's been a little while since I posted a proper video. The last one I did was the Tokyo Marui SD, which is right here and has the right stock. It's great. <laughs> but yeah, um, I'll post a little fucking thing to that here. So check that out. If, if you're into MP5s and you play airsoft, and you want something with a bit more realism, get the VFC. Get the VFC one. It's the best one. If you want just pure game playability with a kind of like realistic feel, the SD, the Marui, or the, the Marui MP5 A5 or A4 or SD that they do, the recoil shock is fucking absolutely phenomenal. It will lift three twos out the box. Mine does 310 out the box, which is pretty impressive for Tokyo Marui. So I just don't need to touch it. It's got its little MOSFET system in there. So your, your internals are all like protected and stuff. It's, the trigger response is phenomenal. If you want like a good airsoft MP5 with a bit of realism, Get the Marui, You'll, you won't need to touch it, you won't need to open it, you won't need to do any upgrades to it. It's fucking great out of the box. If you want something a bit more realistic, with licensed trademarks, with a ton of aftermarket support from several different companies, real steel parts fit it, like, although they are fucking well expensive, then get the VFC. You need, you need to experience how good this thing is. Despite all of its shortcomings, as I've said, this is still my favorite airsoft gun to play games with just because it's so fun to play with. It's so fun to shoot, the range on it, the reliability of it, the gas efficiency. I know, I know, I know in the winter, the gas efficiency sucked if you saw that video, but in the summer, I'm getting like six plus on a really good day. I'm getting six 30 round refills on one fill of gas. And as, as I said, you don't need to believe me. You don't need to believe me, I don't care. That's what I got. Take that how you will. That's a phenomenal performance for a gas blowback gun in general. If you're like me, get both. Get the Marui, get the VFC, and have fun using them. They're so fun. They're re both really, really, really good, well-made, well put together airsoft guns. Um, and, and I've got nothing more to say. So yeah, buy stuff, buy all the VFC stuff. <laughs> I'm joking. But in all seriousness, thank you very much for watching this video. If you got to the end, you're the best. Give it a little like, share it, write a comment. Let me know what you think of the VFC 
V2 MP5. If you've got some experience comparing side by side the VFC to a, the Marui or to the WE or to any other MP5, let me know down in the comments and I'll go check that out. Thank you very much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.